I'm pretty sure you know the following problem. You want to create a card and you've already prepared a really beautiful inked background. You can see it here, can't you? <laughs> But when it comes to attaching a focal point, for example, a die cut or some fuzzy cut flowers or other things, some butterflies cut out from book pages or whatever, you want to attach the focal point and then you think, okay, I don't want to glue that down completely because that is absolutely boring. It has no dimension. I want to have a little distance between the card background and my focal point. And then, of course, you could come to the idea to use some foam squares or foam tape and put that to the back of the focal point and then glue it down and then you would automatically get a little distance. But what to do if you have, for example, a die cut like this, which has really delicate and thin areas like the stem here, how to attach foam tape to the back of such a thing? That is, in my eyes, impossible without freaking out. And while I was sitting here, and that's also the reason why I haven't prepared my inked background here yet, while I was sitting here and creating something for a reel for Instagram, that is this card, I found out a trick and there are only two possibilities <laughs> what you could think about this. You could either think, okay, Louise is genius, or you could laugh at me because you have seen that for 100 times or even more. And that's what I want to show you today. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that this is new for you, because for me, this was a total game changer. As you can see, this wildflower here, this is just glued down, but this is a little like higher away from the background. This has this little distance. Can you see that? And of course, with this distance, we get a really nice shadow on the card automatically, a natural shadow. Can you see this black here? I haven't done that with a marker or something, but that comes from the light. And I really, really love this effect. So I found out something that you have like a really sturdy thing below the die cut so that you have this little distance. Let me show you what I have done. So first of all, I want to make a little uh, like splattery thing here. I want to recreate this card in a similar way. And uh, for that, I want to use scorched timber. What else? It just arrived and I'm so happy that it arrived and I'm so happy that so many of you have been happy with me as well. The magic trick. I can make two cards from just one. <laughs> I just had a little accident and this is the second try of recording this. <laughs> so I have, I think I have found something out about this technique and uh, to be sure that it is like it is, I want to make two backgrounds now. I'm going to start with the Scorched Timber spray stain. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what has happened a second ago, but to find that out, I need two backgrounds and I will use um, two different mediums later to see if it's the medium that made this problem or what it is. It's this thing with experimenting, <laughs> but I know that the first try worked and if I use the same medium then, then it will probably work again. <laughs> So I'm going to dry the spray stain and while I'm drying it with my heat tool, I'm going to splatter some water. I've learned that trick from Tim. He is doing that directly with the spritzing with this water bottle, but I have problems when I have <laughs> my heat tool in my one hand, in one hand and the bottle in the other hand. So I think doing it with a paintbrush is doing a similar job. I want to make a really quick background here. And I also have to say, this is relatively cheap paper from a store like, you know, like a dollar store or something, or what you know as a dollar store. 
Um, and um, I also do this with the scorched timber on this cheap paper because I want to know how it comes out on cheap paper. Um, this is the oxide spray. And I have to say this works really, really well on this cheap paper. These backgrounds, just amazing. I mean, I've already made a few <clears throat> on this kind of paper so that I know that it turns out great. But um, I, I also do this on camera to show it to you because I know that some of you can't achieve really, you know, professional and high quality paper but you can see that you can get really cool effects on this cheap paper as well. So one point that I think I found out is that this needs to be completely dry before you go on. Make sure that everything is like really really dry. <laughs> the other day I said dry like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> you have laughed about that. In the meantime, I learned that mm, bone dry is perhaps the better word. So <laughs> I'm going to take also some really cheap uh, acrylic paint and going to take a palette knife and spread this around here so that I have a really thin layer here because I want to stamp to the background. You could also use a brayer to apply the paint. And I'm going to take this stamp. This is by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. It's from the faded type set. So then we can stamp here. Now, we take the background that we like better for one medium and <laughs> the background that we don't like so much or i mean they are both great but i like this better and we're going to take this here for the medium where i think that it will work 100 percent and this i want to use for the medium that i've used for you know the other part of the video which i've deleted but i want to try it again to see if it works or if it's just not working at all. So how can we get a little distance between our focal point and the background without using foam tape? We need to decide where to place the focal point. You can see I have this scorched timber flower here on the scorched timber background. You can't see that so well. So the plan is to give the flower a shadow in white I want to glue that later here like so, so that it is offset and then we can see the flower on the background really well. So that you can see it better, I'm going to take this flower here so that we can find the position and I think we've already found it. It's here. So let's take this <clears throat> and then you need the paper where you've cut your flower out or whatever die cut you use you just take the the leftover as a stencil meaning i have cut out this from here so i'm going to use this as a stencil now and a good idea is <clears throat> when you cut this out <clears throat> oh, i'm so sorry that you leave a little bit of space around the shape so that you have like a little space here and here and you know all around this thing and then you place this here where you want to have your die cut flower sitting on the card later and then you can use a texture paste of your choice I guess I have used the grid paste snowfall for this here for this card and for the video footage that I've just deleted, I've used Grid Paste Glow. And Grid Paste Glow didn't work. It just didn't stick to my card. I don't know why, 
but it didn't work. But I want to try it again because I had the feeling that when I used it on the other card, you know, um, the from the video footage I've just de deleted, that the background was not completely dry. So we are going to try that again. The grid paste snowfall works 100%. Why have I used grid paste snowfall? That is a very, very simple reason. This paste is really beautiful, but I don't use it so often. And I wanted to use a paste to like use it up so that it doesn't dry out in my jar here. You can, of course, also use any other kind of texture paste, like texture paste opaque, texture paste black or whatever you want to use. I yeah I just want to use this so that it can't dry out because it uh, I don't use it so often. You could also use older pastes which have nearly dried out and which you can't use for like a normal project anymore because this is only like the tiniest bit visible later. Um as long as you can take the paste out from your jar, I mean then I mean, when it's not completely dried out and hard, yeah, when it's <coughs> when it has just thickened up a little bit, then you can still use it and use it for this technique, even if you can't use it for a normal, normal project anymore. So this is also a great way to use up pastes that you can't use for a normal project anymore. So let's try this. <sighs> Fingers crossed. So I am going to take this out with a spatula and then I'm going to stencil it through my paper here. And I want to have this medium thick on my background. Meaning I put this through here but I don't press so much with my spatula so that I can really get like a good layer here don't make it too thick otherwise it's too thick you know and then it looks not so nice it's also not important that this is perfect it's it's just not important you just want to make sure that you have paste everywhere just like this and that every little um, spot here is filled with the paste and then we are going to carefully take this off yeah and this works just perfectly and now you can see we have a really really thick and nice thing here on the card background and we are going to let this air dry first a little bit and while this is drying we are going to take the grid paste glow and try that here This doesn't seem like a re like a big problem, yeah. <laughs> but with the grid base glow on my other card, you know, from the footage I've just deleted, I had a problem because the paste came off from the background when I lifted the stencil off, and I have absolutely no idea why. I'm assuming that the background was not totally dry, so I want to try this again because if this works. We don't only have a beautiful raised flower in the end, but we also have something that glows in the dark because I want to know if when I have the flower on there later and I turn off the light, if you still can see the grid paste glow behind the flower. Okay, so here we go. I'm hoping that this will will stay there yeah and now it works not I don't know why I really don't know why look <laughs> I have absolutely no idea if anyone can help me then please write a comment can you explain why this is happening I have absolutely no idea have I done something wrong or ha ha something has happened to my paste, obviously? I mean, it looks totally normal. Why is this like this? I don't know. I really don't know. 
So that, that either means that grid paste glue doesn't work, but why not? Perhaps it's because of this cheap paper and that the surface of the paper is just too slippery. So obviously you have to try that out. And I'm really sorry that I can't explain that, but this is experimenting and this is a fail again. If I can find a solution and if I can find out why this happened, then I will write a comment below this video and I will pin it to the top of the comment section so that you can read it. I don't know. I'm really sorry. I don't know. But this works, obviously, and this is just great and what I want to have here. So what we are going to do then is we are going to take our heat tool. Yes, I know. Normally we wouldn't do that. We would let this air dry. But I don't care about bubbles here. I don't care if this is getting like ugly because we won't see it later. I just want to go on and I want to make sure that this is like nearly dry for the next step. And now you can see if, if you carefully touch that with your finger, please don't burn yourself. Then you can feel it's sticky. but you don't have anything on your finger anymore and that is exactly what we want and then we let that cool down so that means um the paste has like a little skin but it's not totally dry yet if it is totally dry then you will get also a nice result but you can't do then what i want to do um in a second so i'm going to take some glue and i will glue this to this but a little bit offset. I have put the glue only here to the center because I don't want to glue the petals of the flower and I have put some glue here so that then we also get like a really nice dimensional look of the flower later. And then with this white, it shows up really, really well on the card here. And then when this is like, you know, it's still a little bit squishy and that is really good. That is what you want. We're going to take some glue. And now, look, I'm putting the glue like, uh, let me just do it, then you can see it better. Just in a bigger area than before, not just in the center, because that would be, you know, not not secure enough for me in this case because I want to glue this to the paste in a second and that is of course a different thing than gluing paper to paper yeah that's the reason why I'm using more glue here than in between of both of these layers but I don't put glue to the very edge of those petals because I want to have them being in the air a little bit later oh, my, my glue is making really strange noises by the way this is bookbinders glue please make sure that you use a glue which can glue paper to texture paste you could also use um, collage medium for that and then we're going to line this up exactly on our paste here and just glue it down and this is like the perfectly shaped foam tape because now we have a sturdy thing below the die cut in the shape of the die cut and we don't have to struggle with for example these delicate areas here to be destroyed because when the glue is dry and the, and of course when the paste is dry later then it's really really sturdy and the paste gets really hard of course and when this is like when the glue has grabbed you can take a dotting tool if you have one or something like similar and since the paste is not totally dry yet we can shape the flower do that carefully make sure that the flower doesn't move around so much you want to press down the paste now there in the center of the flower and that's the reason why we didn't let it dry completely 
but just made sure that it doesn't smear anymore so that we now can press this down and with pressing it it squishes out is that the word it, it you know it goes to the left and the right and the top and everywhere but in the middle it's just flat can also take this like so and then just press it and with with doing that you can also <laughs> I'm just finding that out just in this moment you can also get some really cool texture there mm, and I'm just thinking what happens if we take a tinier dotting tool because can you see these little damages in there we could either take a tinier dotting tool to just make some more of these little holes or I'm just thinking can I use my texture hammer is that too big that is just cool look <laughs> I really like that I mean that is not important for this technique <laughs> but um, with pressing the paste down with the dotting tool these little guys the petals are lifting up that is also the reason why I haven't put any glue here so that it is possible that they lift up and at the same time you have this layer underneath which is going to turn translucent so it will not stay in this white ugly color because this looks like foam tape somehow now and of course we don't like to see the foam tape yeah even if you use real foam tape i mean this isn't foam tape do you know what i mean on a card where you have foam tape you don't want the foam tape to be seen and when this is uh, has turned translucent you won't see it so much anymore as well and even if you use like um, an opaque paste I would think that that is not so so bad or yeah that doesn't look ugly because it has the shape of the flower if you have foam tape under here and you have for example like these little squares then they will always look like squares. They would never get the shape of this flower and you would always think, oh, this is glued down somehow. But with this, it's really, I think, really, really cool. So we are going to let this dry. But uh, while this is drying, we can make some uh, grunge and some cool things here on the card. So I want to do something uh, that I have done on this card as well. You can see this torn areas here and uh, I think that looks really nice in combination with the rest so let's see um, how do we want to do this the first thing is we have to decide where we want to put the quote I want to have a quote so I think we are going to put that here so that we could make one tear here and the other one here and perhaps a third one here okay so now if you want to tear this while this is not completely dry then please be careful that you don't um, accidentally rip the flower off so I'm going to take this and I tear towards myself with my left hand you could also do it the other way around of course and I do that as irregular as I want and I'm trying To rip the paper so that you get this cool edge here and you can here see three colors now I mean it's even more than three colors because scorched timber is not only this one color yeah but let's say scorched timber is one color and then we have this like yellowish brown and then the craft paper brown so that are like three different layers yeah and that is because this uh, side of the paper has this like yellowish color and the other side is like this meaning if I tear this I get three different colors and now I have the tear like this can you see it there and now I am just changing the order of the paper I take this and lift that to the top and this I push 
back just like this so that then this torn thing is on the top and I like to press it down and just go over this where the tear ends here a little bit so that it is like flat and then the rest later on when you glue it or sew it then it's uh, flat as well I'm totally in love with these new tiny blending tools it's just so cool so fast wonderful thank you Tim <laughs> I would really think that it looks good here if here's another tear. So that means, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is one of those cards where you have this. How, how the heck can I manage that now? Because I need this and I don't want to like cut it off. I mean, I could cut it off, but why? It's just... Try to. Oh, this, this is aber sehr hard. And this is very hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was German. I'm going to poke in with my scissors here. And then I'm going to try to tear this. And I can just. And this was not very clever because this is now very straight. Oh no. Well, it, it, it is what it is. Don't do that. Just don't do it. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, if I glue, oh my goodness, if I glue this a little wonky, then this looks like it has to be exactly like this. <laughs> do I like this? I like it, but I want to have another torn area here so let's quickly cut this off on the other card I have just you know torn in without uh, the need of cutting this off and I didn't want to cut it off because uh, then it's easier to get it get it back together do you know what This paper tears beautifully in this direction, but not in this. Can you see that? I wasn't able to, to tear it irregular. How often in one day can you freak out? I'm just trying to make something cool out of this. This looks really interesting somehow, but if this is here and this color is here, I need something similar somewhere else, but that means I have to tear it horizontally somewhere so that I get the same effect. So then we can check how dry this is and I think it's okay. So now I'm going to take some tape and the first thing I'm going to do is I put it over those torn areas to make sure that those later on on the card are really like attached, that nothing is coming off and since I want to so around my whole card in a second I don't care about this uh, tape that it doesn't go to the very edge if you don't have a sewing machine or if you don't want to sew then please make sure that you have either tape or glue on the whole surface here so then I'm lining this up with my base here 
Last but not least, I want to add some splatters. I'm going to take some white acrylic paint, even if I know that those splatters will not stay white. <laughs> it disappeared relatively much. Here we can see it. I like it, but I think I also want to add some black splatters because those are going to stay black. I just want to have some more tinier details there. And if you look closer, you can see the paste is not totally dry yet, but you can see another thing. You, can you see this like really intense brown outline around the paste? I think here you can, ooh, it's not focusing. Here you can see it even better. I can't point to that area with my finger because it's so small there and I would cover everything up with my finger. But there's this really dark outline, glossy, really, really dark brown around the paste. And that is another really nice effect because that way the like our fake foam tape yeah this paste it doesn't look like something that we've used to glue the flower it doesn't look like weird foam tape or something that is yeah a thing that helps the die cut to be glued on the card i don't know how i can say that but it just looks like another layer yeah even if it makes this distance and it's so sturdy this is just cool even if it is not completely dry yet it's so sturdy way sturdier than foam tape would be but it doesn't look like this ugly thing that we use to make this distance yeah it doesn't look like foam tape and when i look at this I just wanted to say goodbye, but when I look at this, do you really think that is finished? I think that looks way nicer than what we had before. Okay, so that's it. I hope that you like this little trick. And I hope that you haven't seen it before. Let me know if you already knew that and if you perhaps are doing it all the time with the texture paste instead of foam tape or what do you think about this? And if you have tried it out, then let me know if it has worked and which paste you've used. And if you have tried the grid paste glow, then please let me know if you had the same problems like I had here. Because this is just weird. But do you know what we could try out is... I will quickly do that because then we know that as well. And if it's worth to really find out why the grid paste glow didn't work. If the flower was on here. And if I then would turn off my light. Would we then see the glow? I want to know that. So let's see. Let's turn off the light. Why is only one? Oh, you know. Yeah, you, we would see it. Can you? I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Let me just lift this up. Oh my goodness! Look. We we could and mm, the paste isn't even charged completely at the moment, but we would see the glow behind the flower. Oh my goodness, that would be so cool. Ah! So if I can find out why this didn't work, I will pin a comment on the top of the, you know, the comment section and let you know uh, what I found out. But I think this is beautiful, even if it isn't glowing. <laughs> so I hope you like this and see you the next time. Bye bye.